this house today. Lord, open up the windows today, God. Let us see you. Open up the heavens today, God. Let us see you, Lord. Open up our eyes today to see you, Lord, as Isaiah saw you, high and lifted up above our problems, above the chaos, above the noise, Lord, above my troubles, above my fear, God, above my anxiety, Lord, above my depression, Lord. Open my eyes today to see you. Open up the heavens today. Pull the curtain back, God, that we would see and recognize that you are still on the throne. Lord, as we come this morning, we've come hungry and desperate for you. As your servant, I humbly confess today and I acknowledge I'm nothing. You and you alone are God. My very breath belongs to you. My strength is yours. It's a tool in your hand. I surrender myself. Use me as such, however you see fit for your glory. Let it be your word that goes forth today, not the word of a man. And I pray that you and you alone are seen and glorified in this place. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Can we give the Lord a praise clap this morning? You may be seated. You know, I never, ever bring my phone into the sanctuary. And I did a while ago, and I realized, wow, that, that song they sang a while ago, I, had to, I didn't have a pen, so I began to type it in my phone, but... I, I want to know this morning before I get into the Lord, how many of you believe in God? I, I mean, you really believe in God, the God of the Bible. How many of you believe in Him? Give Him praise if you believe in Him. I, I'm not asking, have you heard of Him? I want to know, do, do you believe in Him? From, from, from the beginning of your Bible all the way till He comes back. Because what you're saying is, I believe in the God of the Bible. You know, the one that, that looked at nothing and spoke it into existence. That's the God that I believe in. I believe in the God who rose from the dead. I believe in the God who, who rose Lazarus back to life. I believe in the God that can make miracles happen still today. Who, who at a word can speak things into existence. Do, do you believe in that God this morning? Let, let's give the Lord one more praise clap. I, I, didn't, I didn't know what songs they were going to sing, but I, I believe the Lord has orchestrated this. The, the song they opened up with, open up the heavens, we want to see you. I believe today that there are some of you today that you desperately need to see God over your storm. You, you need to see God right now in, in, in your darkness. You, you're in a valley today, and, and you know, in the valley sometimes you look up and, and all you see is the shadows. All you see is the mountain in front of you and trying to figure out, how am I ever going to get out of this? God, open up the heavens today. Let me see you. You know what I love about God? One of the things I love is that even in the darkness, God puts stars in the sky. Even when you can't see the moon, the stars are out there. God showing, listen, no matter how dark it is, I'm the light of the world. If you keep your eyes fixed on me, I'll lead you out of every storm, every valley, every low place. This the second song they sing says, the voice of the Lord is powerful. Do you believe that? The voice, the, the same voice that spoke the world into existence. He said, let there be light and there was light. He says, you speak and there's healing. Come on, somebody, listen to me this morning. You need healing. That, that same God, and I asked you at the beginning, I wasn't trying to set you up. I just, you need to establish where your faith lies this morning. You, you, you can stay in that bent over broken condition the rest of your life, or you can choose like the woman with the issue of blood. Everybody else, the Bible says they were thronging Jesus, touching him, rubbing elbows. They were packed in like sardines. And I wonder, I, I, every time I think about that passage, I, I think about how many people must have been in the crowd that day that desperately needed a touch from God, brushed elbows with him, saw him walk by, had access to him. This woman, this woman who could have been stoned because she, she was unclean, got to the point of desperation. I'm not, I'm not going to allow Jesus to pass by this close. And not at least reach out by faith. And, and maybe, just maybe, maybe the God that I've heard about, you know, the one that, that does miracles, maybe, just maybe, there's a miracle for me. 
In a desperation, she crawls through the crowd. She's not even looking to brush elbows with him or even get a little face time. If I can just touch the hem of his garment, I believe. I believe in the God of this Bible. The Bible had declared even in the Old Testament that when the Messiah comes, he will come with healing in his wings or in the tassels of his garment. What I'm telling you is this woman put her faith in the word of God. And, and when she touched Jesus, Jesus stopped the whole procession. Somebody touched me. He felt virtue had gone from his body. What he felt was the faith of this woman that stretched out, hoping to find something. I can't help but wonder how many of us, I hadn't even started preaching yet this morning, so you better amen me loud this morning or you won't ever shut me up. I wonder how many people come to church every week. You know, this is God's house. You do know that, right? I don't care what sign's out front, who's standing by. This is God's house. If there's ever a place that he's in, it ought to be this place. If there's ever a place you ought to come expecting to find him, to touch him, it's this place. You speak and there's healing. You speak and there's life. Lazarus dead four days. You speak and he's alive. You speak and dry bones rise. The God of the Bible. This is the one I'm asking, do you believe in this morning? God's our source of provision. God is our source of power. He's our source for everything that we need. Amen? How many of you believe that today? He's the source of power, your, your power, your strength, your provision, everything that you need. I'm going to speak to somebody this morning. Look at somebody beside you and say, I will rise up. If you're by yourself, talk to yourself. It's all right. I won't, I won't tell the therapist on you. You need to declare that over the enemy. I will rise up. I will rise up. I won't die in this valley. I'm not going to stay in this been over broken condition. I will rise up. I don't know about you, but there's always seasons in my life, at least, where it seems like the enemy is getting the best of me. I've had mountaintop experiences with God, and, you know, you love to be on that mountaintop. And when I was a, a, a new believer, a young Christian, I thought that's what the Christian experience was all about, the mountaintop. And when I found myself in the valley, I thought, well, I must have done something wrong. Somehow I fell off the mountain. And I realized, you know, this, this walk is a walk of faith. And in this walk, there'll be mountains and there'll be valleys. And sometimes there'll be pits. Ask Joseph about that. Sometimes it's hard to maintain your faith and your trust in God. You know, the one that you say is the source of your provision, your protection, your power, your strength, everything you need. Sometimes it's hard to keep your faith in God when the weight of the world comes crashing in on you. I don't know about you, listen, I'm, I'm just going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to preach to me for a minute. Is that okay? Just, you, you can just observe. You watch the Holy Spirit work on your preacher. There's seasons in my life where the weight of the world has come crashing down on my shoulders. And I know the Bible, and I believe in the Bible, and I believe in the God of that Bible. But I have watched my faith buckle like my knees at times. And leave me questioning everything that I say that I believe and everything that I've preached to others. And I want to know in that moment, where is my faith at, God? I find this big difference between what I say I believe and what I believe in that moment. Now hear me this morning. It doesn't mean, at least for me, it doesn't mean that I've truly stopped believing in that. I'm just having difficulty in the valley seeing God. I'm having vi difficulty with my vision in the valley, seeing even the stars, the little glimmer in the midnight. You know, in that, in that season of darkness, sometimes it's, it's so easy to focus on how vast the darkness is that I overlook that there's still light shining, there's still hope that God's still on the throne. So, so what a glorious way to open up the service today, asking God, pull back the curtain, God. Let me see again, Lord. Pull back the curtain because I'm lost in the darkness. I don't think you're lost, God. I don't think you've overlooked me, God. But right now I'm struggling. 
It's easy to live for God and to trust God when everything's going well. But when everything comes crashing in, even those of us that think we're strong in the Lord, we find out how weak, how puny, how frail our faith can be. It's in those moments of desperation that you really need God. It's in that moment that you need God like never before. And yet it's in that moment that we seem so lost and, and, and struggling and desperate, grasping for hope. And too often it's in those times that we, we, we scratch and claw and we'll, we'll settle for some man or some woman to be the answer to that. Maybe the preacher, the Sunday school teacher, maybe something romantically. You feel broken. Your marriage is struggling. You go grasping for straws, trying to find something to fill that void. Finances are a wreck, and so we, we go grasping for overtime and neglect our relationship with God. Now, I ask you again at the beginning, do you believe in God? You know, the one that is your next breath, the one that is your strength and your power and your provider, your supplier? Because if you really believe him, then in those moments, you've got to know you can trust him. You can count on him. You have your Bibles, turn with me to Isaiah chapter 40. As I was preparing for a funeral earlier this week, the Holy Spirit spoke to me about the multitude of people in our church and in every church who are suffering. Sick and stressed, depressed, depressed, grieving, hurting, broken, anxious, worried, troubled. I want you to know if you've been in a valley or you're going through a storm or you're just in one of these seasons, God's got a word for you this morning. In Isaiah chapter 40, verse 26. Lift up your eyes on high. Look up. <laughs> Behold, who hath created these things that bringeth out their host by number? He calleth them all by names, by the greatness of his might, for that he is strong in power, not one faileth. Why sayest thou, O Jacob, and speakest, O Israel, my way is hid from the Lord, and my judgment is passed over from my God? Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, he fainteth not, neither is weary. There's no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint. And to them that have no might, he increaseth strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they, glory to God, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and faint not. He said, Why sayest thou, O Jacob, and speakest, O Israel, my way is hid from the Lord, my judgment is passed over from my God. Our way is hidden from the Lord. Our situation escapes his notice. God doesn't see me. God doesn't know. God doesn't care. I can paraphrase what they're saying. Lord, you don't understand what I'm going through. There's somebody in here this morning that sounds all too familiar. You may have said different words, but in your heart you've wondered the same thing. God, don't you care? Don't you see? And you've went home and you've cried out and you've, you, you've tried to hold on tightly to the passage that says, you know, God won't place more on me than I'm able to bear. God, but I feel like I can't take it anymore. You know, the Bible, the Bible really doesn't promise that he won't place more on you than you can't bear. He's talking about that in terms of temptation. We think about it in terms of life. The truth is he'll put more on you than you can bear so that his strength can be revealed in your weakness. You'll go through a lot of things in this life that you'll find out you can't do it. But if you put your trust in God, you'll find out that through God, all things are possible. God never promised we wouldn't go through things. He never promised we wouldn't go through hard times. He never promised that we'd go through this life without troubles and storms. But here's what he did promise. He'd never leave us nor forsake us. Here's what he did promise. He said, I'll supply your every need according to my riches and glory. 
Don't get caught up when you think about riches and think about gold and silver and your financial problems. He said, I'll supply all your needs. When you're emotionally broken and empty, drained, nothing left. I've got riches in the storehouse. A wealth of peace, that peace that passeth understanding, the grace of God that will see you through every storm and every trial and every tribulation. When Lazarus is dead, you think gold and silver is what he needed? No. What he needed was a word from God, a word that would bring life back into his lungs. Mary and Martha weren't asking Jesus to pay some bills off. He said, I'll supply all your needs according to my riches and glory. Psalms 55, 22 says, cast your burden upon the Lord. Cast your burden upon the Lord and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. He'll sustain thee. You, you, you know that scripture we love to quote and recite. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Glory, hallelujah. But what about when the enemy's taking target practice? <laughs> And the bullets are flying right by your head. And you're saying, God, I thought you said no weapons formed against me would prosper. He said, you're still kicking, ain't you? <laughs> yeah, but he's got real bullets. Yeah. Oh, you, you, you thought the enemy was going to leave you alone when you started coming to church. That's, that's what you thought. Well, God, I started praying too. Yeah. And the enemy called in backups. And started firing from every angle. Because you started getting close to God. And that became a threat. Your children started drawing near to God. And the enemy started, rather than attacking your children, he started attacking your marriage. You started drawing near to God. And the enemy started attacking your health. Those of you that say, I don't know about all that, look at the story of Job. I don't have time to go preach that to you. Because it's not always about you. The things you go through is not always about you. Job held on to his faith, but can I tell you what it did? It rocked the faith of his wife to the point that she pleaded with him. Why don't you just curse God and die? Look what's happened to our family. We've lost everything, and you're still trusting God? He says, shall I take the good and not the bad? You know, what, what, what Job was in essence saying is the same thing I, I, I love to say over you all the time. God's good. How often? You, you understand what that means and implies. You know, even when life's not good and everything is falling to pieces, God's still good. You, you think Job was oblivious to the fact that his children are dead? That his business has fallen apart and he's got nothing left? You, you, you think Job had his head buried and said, no, he knew. The pain was real. Job's body was covered in sore and sickness. His children are dead. His wealth is gone. Everybody around him is looking at him and saying, what did you do, Job? God's punishing you. How can a man say at a time like that, shall I take the good and not the bad? Here's how he can say it. I trust in God. The same God that gave me my last breath will give me my next breath. The same God that blessed me with the things of this world can restore me if he so chooses. But I'm going to trust God. I'm not going to trust the things of this world. I'm not going to trust the things that I once possessed, that I trust my hope, my security, my all is in God and Him alone. Cast your burden on the Lord, and He will sustain thee. You know, we sing that beautiful old hymn, The Anchor Holds. Cast your burden on the Lord. It's like throwing that anchor in the storms of life that just tear at you. And threaten to drag you out into a wasteland of despair and hopelessness. We cast our burden, cast it all upon the Lord and the anchor holds. 
He shall sustain thee. Israel had become discouraged. They felt like God had forgotten about them, that God had overlooked them. He's unconcerned. I don't know about you, but I've been there. I've been there since I've been pastoring. God had to remind them who he is. I discovered what it is that pulls me out of that is when God reminds me who he is. Sometimes he reminds me by reminding me of what he's already done. See, sometimes the storms that I've been in, they, they, they felt like the worst thing that I'd ever been through until I got on the other side and I looked back and thought, my goodness, God had been faithful to bring me out of things far worse than that. But somehow I got lost in the darkness there and overwhelmed by it. And in that moment, I was swallowed up in defeat thinking to myself, you know, this is it. This is the end. It can't get any worse. God brings me through on the other side. I look back, you know, that 2020 vision. You know, in reverse, is, is always faithful. It never fails. You look back and you say, why was I so troubled? Because then I could look and, and I could testify even then. And God's brought me through bigger storms than that last. That last one really wasn't that big. I just got overwhelmed with the darkness. God had to remind them. He says, verse 28, hast thou not known, hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord... The creator of the ends of the earth, the God of the Bible, the one that you say you believe in, church. He fainteth not, neither is he weary. There's no searching of his understanding. God never faints. He never gets weary. God's in control. Isn't that good news? Doesn't mean God, God's not tired. He's not napping. He never gets weary, never gets weak, never gets tired of answering your prayers. You may feel like that at times, but that's not the voice of God speaking that to you. Sometimes we cry out to God and we feel this way. And sometimes we hold back because we feel this way. It's God, it's me again. I know I've been calling on you a lot lately. I know maybe I haven't been in church like I should lately, God, but I need you. And sometimes that's what we, we don't even, the Bible says come boldly to the throne of grace. God, God, the Bible also says that, you know, he's near to the brokenhearted. I, I understand that, that sometimes we're so weak in our faith. But here's the difference. When you understand that relationship, when you have a relationship with your mother or your father that's healthy, and you need something, you don't care what time of day or night it is. You, you pick up the phone, you boldly call at 3 o'clock in the morning. You dare not do that with just anybody because you're like, I don't know them, it's, you know. I'm not just going to knock on some stranger's door. But we approach God that way sometimes. Like, I know you probably won't answer. You don't, you don't want to hear from me, God. You're disappointed in me. The prodigal son, the prodigal son had more faith than his father to think, you know what? I know you've got to be disappointed. I've I've let you down so many times in so many ways and for so long. And yet the Bible paints a clear picture in that story that the father saw him while he's yet afar. He ran to him. Don't, don't let the enemy overwhelm you with defeat and discouragement and separate you from your God because you, you know, I haven't read my Bible like I should, so this is why I'm being punished and I haven't been coming to church like I should, and that's why things are falling apart. So God, I know you don't really want to hear from me now, so I'll figure it out. And when I get my life in order, then, then I can expect the blessings of God to come back. And God's saying, just why don't you come back home, prodigal? Come back home. Put your faith, your trust back in me. You realize you can be a prodigal and come to church every week? <laughs> There's many a preacher that can testify to that. Came to church for a long time, running from God. God never faints, never gets weary. It is good news. For some of us, we say, it sure sounds like it, preacher. 
but I sure am weary. God might not get tired, but I'm tired. I'm hurting, and I'm broken, and I've prayed, and I've prayed, and I've read the Bible. Sure seems like he's forgotten about me, Pastor Mark. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Can I remind you how faithful your God's been all your life? When he said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Can, can you, can you honestly look back on your life and tell me one time, one time where that's failed to be true? Just give me one time. And if, if you can think of one time where God has left you or forsaken you or forgotten about you, then I'll excuse your lack of faith today. You won't be able to come up with one. So you need to look at the devil and say, I will rise up. I will rise up. I, I don't know how I'm going to even get up, but I will rise up. God will sustain me. God will strengthen me. He said, the youth shall faint and get weary. Young man shall utterly fail. The scripture is saying there, it says, it's not an age thing. It's not something you can do in your own strength. He said, the young who should have strength, the picture of strength and health, he said, they'll fail and they'll fall flat on their face. You've been trying to fix this long enough on your own. You know the word and you're trying to do it on your own and invite God in to bless your plan. And it's not working. He said, the picture of strength will not suffice. Your abilities won't cut it. Your knowledge won't fix it. Let me just be candid with you for a moment. I've shared with many of you and all really behind this pulpit multiple times. I went through a season of depression some years ago. Until that point, the honest to God truth is I really didn't even think depression was a real thing. Well, I'd heard of it. And I knew it was a medical term. But my honest opinion up till that point was it was just an excuse that people use to not do what they need to do in life. Oh, I was wrong. Grossly mistaken. It was one of the darkest seasons in my life. And I'm only telling you that because, listen, I had started pastoring this church. I knew the Word of God. I believed in the God of the Bible. I believed this book from one cover to the next. I believed in the power of prayer. I quoted James, the effectual fervent prayers of a righteous man availeth much. You'll never leave me nor forsake me. And yet all day, every day, for nearly a year, my mind was plagued with despair and want, questioning, where's God? Oh, you said you'll never leave me or forsake me. And I preached a good sermon on Sunday about a God I say I believe in, but I can't find you. You say you'll never leave me, but where are you at, God? I'm crying. I'm praying. I'm fasting. I'm reading my Bible. And if that alone was enough, if I could do it in my strength, I would have been depressed for no more than a day. I may have felt like God had forsaken me and forgotten about me, but I can look back now again with that 2020 vision and tell you God was there every step along the way. When the thoughts entered my mind that would terrify my family just to know the craziness that was going on in my mind. God was there to sustain me. You know the thing, when you cast that anchor out, you really don't know if it's holding or not. You don't know if the next wave is going to pull it loose. You can't see what's going on down there. All you do is cast it out and hold on by faith. The next wave seems bigger than the last one. And the last one I thought for sure was going to be the one to take me out. And then beyond this wave I could see five more coming that's bigger than this. God, when's it going to end? Scripture says when the enemy comes in like a flood, God raises up a standard. 
<laughs> Some of you don't know what that means. You, you, it, it means when the enemy comes in like a flood, God builds a wall in front of you. Say, God, well, I need that wall right now. I'm, I'm about to go under. God's saying, you want to know why you're not already under? <laughs> you got splashed in the face by a wave because I threw a wall up right in front of you. So when the enemy comes in like a flood, you won't be able to stand. It'll knock you right off your feet. You're still standing, brother and sister. You're still standing. <laughs> i got to get through this. No matter how strong you think you are, you're not strong enough. And it's okay this morning to get real with God. Say, God, I, I can't handle it. I'm not fooling you, God. I can't handle it. I want my wife to feel like I can handle it. I want the kids to think I've got it. I want the people that go to church with me. You know, they look up to me, God. I want them to think, you know, I've, I've got it, but I don't have it. God, I don't have it. I don't have the answer. I don't know how I'm going to get through this. I say that time heals all wounds. God, but I'm still grieving. Some people are telling me it's been long enough. You know, they, they passed away long enough. You, you should get over it. Move on. God, but I'm hurting. I'm putting on a good face for them. I'm putting on a good show because I, I want to move on, Lord, but I'm broken. I'm hurting. I'm grieving. They walked out on me, God, and I, I, I'm saying I trust you, Lord, but the truth is, I'm wondering where you're at. God, I can't handle it. I'm weak. I'm tired. I'm tired, Lord. Verse 31, but, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Wait does not mean to sit back and do nothing. In the Hebrew, the word wait there doesn't mean to just sit back idle. I've listened to people in church say that many times. You know, I'm just waiting on God. It's not what this verse means. Those that sit back and do nothing. When I was depressed, I'm telling you, to sit back and say, well, I'm waiting on God. You know, God's a healer. I'm just going to kick back and relax and wait on God. To do that won't help me sleep at night. To do that won't make the thoughts go away in my mind that maybe this world would be a better place if I weren't in it. To sit back and do nothing, you know, just to come to church. It's not helping me with my anxiety. I'm just as worried and frightened as ever before. It doesn't give me peace. Lord, I, I, I'm saying I trust in you. Here's, here's what the word wait means in the Hebrew language. It means I put my confidence in God. In Hebrew, it, it means that I'm expecting. I am expecting God to come through. That, that's what it means to wait. I'm overwhelmed. I'm broken. I'm hurting. I'm empty. I'm in despair. I'm wondering where God is at. But they who wait, not those who sit back and do nothing and, and hold on and quote a couple of scriptures or, or just show up to church on Sunday, but those who put their expectation, their hope in God. He'll not fail me. Let me give you an example of what that looks like. You're familiar with the three Hebrew boys that they threw into the fire, aren't you? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Our, our kids learned that story early on. Those men said something when the king said, you're about to die. He said, no, our God will save us. I'm paraphrasing, this is what they said. Our God will save us. And if he doesn't save us from the fire, he'll save us on the other side. They said, listen, God's got us. We might die in the fire. That's real. We really might die. People die in fires. That, that really might happen. God's big enough. He can save us through it. 
And if he doesn't, he's a big God. We're going to be all right on the other side. They that wait, they that put their expectation in God. Do do you want to know what happened to those three Hebrew boys? They were thrown into the fire. The same fire that killed the men that opened up the hatch to throw them in. It was so hot that it killed them on the outside. These boys were thrown into the fire, tied up. <laughs> but they that wait on the Lord, they didn't sit back and do nothing. They put all of their chips in. I'm betting in God. God's got me. God's got me. That fire was hot. It's real. It destroys many others, but my hope is in God. So if my hope's in God, my fear can't be in this because God's bigger than this. He spoke the whole world into this. That's the God that I believe in. I can't say I believe in him and not, not put my faith in him. My hope, my, my faith, my confidence, my expectation is in the Lord. But those that wait upon the Lord. Hebrew boys had the ropes burned off of them and they started walking around in the fire. <laughs> walking? In the, I mean, I don't know about you, but I'd be jumping to get out. See, they weren't in there alone. When they were going in, it looked like for sure, look, where's, where's God now? God, I'm praying. I mean, I just, I just put my faith on the line. I told the king that you, you got us. And you're going to let me get thrown in here? Just, I mean, God, where are you at? You want to know where I'm at? <laughs> I'm building up a standard right now. In the middle of the fire. See, you, you want me to rescue you from everything in life, but your faith is built up in the fire, isn't it? It's glorious to hear others' testimonies, you know, how God healed them, how he restored their marriage. As exciting as it is to hear about others' testimonies, you'll never know the God that heals until he's healed you. You'll never know the God that supplies the miracle you're able to tell others listen I was that widow who had nothing but a little oil and they were coming to take my children and life was over for me they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings as eagles they'll run and not be weary strength is renewed I'm so weak and I feel like giving up and giving in throwing in the towel I don't know how I'm going to make it out God as strength is renewed those that put their hope their confidence their trust in God their strength is Renewed. Literally, the Bible means it's exchanged. It doesn't mean that God refreshes you like a good nap will do. Because the truth is, if a good nap would have fixed it, you'd have already been better, wouldn't you? You know, if just a little sitting back and doing nothing, waiting on God in that respect would do it, you'd already be through this storm. But the fact is, the waves are still coming. And you can see that the end is not in sight. Those Hebrew boys could see the flames. They saw the man fall over dead. They knew all of that. They knew that was death. They weren't fools. But they waited with expectation. They waited on the Lord. My hope is in God, the same God who spoke the world into existence. I believe in that God. Even now, I see the waves. But see, I believe in the God that walks on the water in the middle of the storm. I believe in the God that raised Lazarus from the dead when it was over and done and finished. I believe in the God that spoke man into existence. So if I'm sick in my body, the same God that created man out of the dust of the earth, he can still heal me now. But if he doesn't, he will heal me on the other side. I want to be like the Hebrew boys. My confidence is in God, and he will not fail me. He won't fail me. I may go through fires and trials and storms in this life. 
Because God never promised me I wouldn't. Matter of fact, if you read your Bible and you know it, you'll see that you will. These mighty men of God, they went through some hellacious storms. You want to know why we celebrate Job? Because of what a mess God allowed him to go through. I dare say that not a one of you in here today even hold a candle to the stuff Job went through. The same God that was faithful to Job is faithful to you. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They'll run and not be weary. They'll walk and not faint. (laughs) They'll renew their strength. Scripture says that in our weakness, his strength is made perfect. What that really means is when your strength runs out, it's there that the strength of God is revealed. When you couldn't do it, and yet God does it anyway. You think those Hebrew boys could get themselves out of that? No, they couldn't. And they accepted it and said, Lord, I don't have it. I can't do it. I can't fix it. I can't change it. But I'm waiting on you expectation rather than trying to jump out of the fire Lord I'm trusting that I'm landing right in your arms and I'm going to walk I'm going to put one foot in front of the other and walk by faith you ever thought about that I mean you're in the fire frog will try to jump out the frying pan they say I don't like frog legs I hadn't tried it but these boys were dropped in the fire didn't even try and run didn't scream just started walking we walk by faith and not by sight I see the waves, but that's not, that's not what moves me. My faith in God, that's what moves me. They'll rise up. They'll rise up or mount up with wings as eagles. I heard the story of someone who witnessed a little sparrow frantically flying across the freeway, trying desperately to, to get to the median, dodging cars. When it landed, they said it looked frazzled and out of breath. A little bird panting for air, but it was all right. So just a couple of miles down the road, I saw an eagle take off off a cliff and fly over this great chasm, and it never once flapped its wings. Eagles don't fight and flap their wings to try and get where they're going. That little bird was wore out, desperate, dodging this and dodging that, trying just to survive. Here's what Scripture says. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. You want to know what the eagle does? He's not discouraged with the storms that come. Stand with me all over the house. He's not afraid when storms come his way. The eagle's not at all. You know what that eagle does, that majestic, beautiful creature? No matter how violent the storm is, you know what he does? He doesn't flap and fight against it. What he does is he stretches his wings out. And he allows God to do what only God can do. God created him that way. He puts his hope in God. He waits upon the Lord. He stretches his arms out by faith. And no matter how violent the storm is, God causes them to soar. That's what they'll do. They'll turn face on to the storm. And they'll soar up high above it. God does that for them. With every head bowed and every eye closed. Some of you this morning, you need to know and be reminded God has not forgotten you. He's not overlooked your plight. He's not weary of your prayers. He's not abandoned you. He's seen your tears. He's felt your struggle. He's seen your depression, your weakness, your brokenness, your emptiness, your despair, your sorrow, your grieving, your mourning, your hurting. God sees it. He's heard the thoughts through your mind. 
in your cries of wondering, where are you, God? He says, I'm here. You're like the Hebrew boys. You're in the fire questioning God. Where are you at? Don't you see where I'm at? I can sense a smile on God's face saying, yes. You want to know why you still are? You're wondering where I am? I'm here with you. You want to rise above the storm? You've got to stretch your arms out by faith. Wait upon me. Put your expectation in me that I can heal. I can restore. I can revive. Over this house with every head bowed, every eye closed, would you just stretch your arms up towards the heavens this morning? Some of you today, you're in a desperate way. You're not here by chance or accident or coincidence. It was a funeral this week that the Holy Spirit began to minister to your pastor. And I've been weeping throughout most of this sermon because God showed me earlier this week the brokenness, the amount of brokenness, hurt, despair, fear that gripped the hearts of this flock. And the Holy Spirit spoke, stretch your faith out again. Declare, I will rise up. They that wait upon the Lord, that's me. I admit, I acknowledge, I confess, I can't do it, God. I've tried and I've tried and I've tried, but you can, you can. My my faith is in you. My hope is in you. I have an expectation that has been renewed today because I do believe in the God of the Bible. The one that spoke the whole world into existence. The same God that had a word brought Lazarus out of that tomb. You can heal my marriage, God. You can heal my heart. The same God that healed that woman. The issue of blood after 12 years and having spent all that she had. God, you you can heal me. I know that my family's been through a storm. And it's been one wave after the next. And just when we thought we were finally through, we realized it was simply the eye of the storm. And there's a whole other side of this thing now coming at you. Yeah, but the anchor holds. (laughs) God's saying, cast your burden upon me. I'll sustain you. I've been with you this far. I will never leave you nor forsake you. I know you're grieving. I've seen your tears and I've heard your cries. And I've comforted you every night. You want to know why you finally dozed off to sleep? Because I gave you that peace. In this life, you'll have sorrow and tribulation. But be of good cheer, he said, I've overcome the world. Holy Spirit, have your way today, Lord. I pray, God, that not only would be we be reminded of how faithful you have been already, but that our faith would be renewed again by the reality of our own testimony I look back in my life and I see you've brought me through so many storms and so many valleys I admit and I acknowledge I realize I'm I'm just lost in the darkness but you're not lost and you've not lost sight of me you don't faint you don't fail you don't become weary So I trust you. I trust you even here. Paul and Silas in the midnight hour. Backs bloodied, chained to a prison cell. And the Bible says they did something extremely peculiar. They began to sing praises unto God. How can you do that at a time like that in such darkness, pain, and despair? You see, I'm waiting on the Lord. I'm 
not sitting back doing nothing. I'm going to praise him now because I believe in the God of the Bible. He may or he may not deliver us, but he's good. He's worthy to be praised. I'm stretching out my wings. And if the storm comes, let it come. Because the wind of the Holy Spirit will lift me up and cause me to rise above every wave and every wind and every storm. I trust in you, God. Lord, I speak today a blessing, Lord, over these, your people. Open our eyes again today to see you high and lifted up. Renew our faith and our strength so that the testimony of your people may be heard and declared throughout all the land, throughout their homes, their families, Lord, of what great things you've done. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you. I love you.